Hi, and welcome to the first session here in our new chapter on Bayesian optimization. So this will uh, introduce uh, black box optimization in a certain sense again, because we already talked about the general scenario in the beginning of the lecture. We'll define it, um, we'll define again what we mean by black box optimization and specifically expensive black box optimization, give some examples and discuss a few alternative naive and not so naive approaches and um, yeah, um, criticize them and discuss why we are actually motivated to do something that's model and machine learning based and which will then lead us um, to the introduction of Bayesian optimization. So um, again, yeah, let's define what we mean um, by a black box problem. So um, as per our usual notation and definitions, we'll consider minimizing by default an objective function f. Um, there will be some feasible um, region of interest, which we'll denote by capital S. Our decision variables will be denoted by a bold vector x. Okay, and here in this chapter, um, we will only uh, consider um, um, single criteria optimization problems. Uh, so f maps to r to the to the one, and usually our feasible feasible area s or region of interest is simply defined by some box constraints. Yeah, so we have usually some, some upper and lower bound for each of our numerical decision variables. And hopefully, if we are lucky, and this is the scenario we considered before in the rest of the lecture, most of the time, we have an analytical description um, of f. So f is defined by some more or less um, simple mathematical formula. And we can potentially even calculate gradients on that so we can exploit it's analytical and um, given, I don't know, white box structure, okay? Um, and if we can do that, we can then run um, gradient-based methods on them. So first order techniques like uh, gradient descent or uh, second order techniques, Newton-like Newton techniques or quasi-Newton techniques. Now, we've already considered the case that potentially we sometimes cannot calculate gradients because f is maybe not differentiable, um, but maybe f is not even known to us. So maybe f is uh, simply a computer program. Yeah? So um, we can only evaluate f at some, some input vectors and observe the output, um, but that's the only thing we can do with it. Um, as long as these evaluations are um, somewhat cheap, yeah? so maybe we can evaluate this function in, in a few microseconds, maybe in a few seconds, then we can use these standard derivative-free optimization uh, techniques that we have uh, discussed here before. So we can run something like Nelda Mead on it, simulate kneeling, we can run an evolutionary algorithm. And well, of course, these uh, techniques will um, be, you know, they, will, they will perform differently and some of them might be more appropriate um, to some problems, but um, we have a pretty um, rich um, playing field in front of us so we can usually make an appropriate choice and then optimize uh, optimize these scenarios. Unfortunately there are also many 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 scenarios where um, these black box functions which are usually then simulators yeah, so they are complex computer programs um, representing either a, a physical process or some engineering scenario uh, some maybe some simulation of the real world some simulation of a physical process or some um, simulation of, I don't know, some piece of equipment or a car or a car crash or something like this. Um, and these simulations, they do not come cheaply, they do not come for free. So we have usually, we usually have to invest very, very high um, amount of computation time um, in order to compute our results. So this is what we would call an expensive black box optimization problem. And that is particularly hard to solve with uh, all of the techniques we have discussed until here in the lecture. Here are a few examples where people have used um, Bayesian optimization uh, on. So um, first of all, um, there's this, uh, there's for example, a robot gate optimization um, scenario. So here we have a robot in front of us and this, uh, the robot's gate is con uh, controlled by a parameterized controller and we now want to find the parameters potentially that um, uh, 
um, maximize the average velocity of our robot. Um, and in this case, we actually simulate the robot. Um, yeah, we don't, sorry, we do not simulate the robot. We um, yeah, configure the controller, let the robot run around, and maybe the robot will even break if we run too many experiments. And it's pretty obvious yeah, that we have to operate under a very, very tightly constrained budget. Um, um, if you want to know more about um, yeah, such an application, yeah, we've given you the reference here um, on the slide. Um, here's a more fun example uh, that even, even has Bayesian optimization in the title. This is called Bayesian optimization for a better dessert. So here they actually try to optimize uh, a cookie recipe. So yeah, the cookies are, I guess, appealing to, um, to volunteers, to testers. So they try to find the optimal composition and the amount of ingredients, which you can see here. So how much, how much salt is in the cookie, how much sugar is in there. Hopefully there's uh, much more, way more sugar than salt. Maybe not too much, so they don't, don't become overly sweet and um, I, I don't know, unhealthy. Um, yeah, the chip quantity, the chocolate chips. Yeah, of course, there should be lots of chocolate chips in the cookie, um, at least uh, I guess to make them appealing to me, what uh, type of chocolate and so on. So here they, um, during the optimization, they kind of propose and suggest different compositions and then they in the real world they test these cookies by the volunteers see how how they fare how they get scored by the volunteers yeah and then they um, optimize that and for that they use um, actually Bayesian optimization to plan these new experiments and how that works we will um, start explaining in the upcoming section um, before we do this maybe some other approaches that could be um, tried could be applied to these expensive black box optimization problems. So for example, we could just try out stuff manually. I mean, especially, I don't know, for this robot controller, um, maybe for the cookie recipe, I guess, especially in the past, people will have tried this out just by fiddling around um, with the settings yeah, um, yeah, and then kind of manually uh, trying to kind of hill, hill climb on that and um, yeah, improve the outcome. Um, of course, if you are a very experienced expert, that can actually work. Um, if the problem is not too hard, that can work, but it is obviously pretty inefficient. Um, usually this is also kind of expensive in terms of resources because these experts are usually pretty expensive. Yeah, you have to pay for their time. And yeah, usually they are well, much slower than a computer also in kind of just trying things out. Um, there's the added on problem of very poor reproducibility. So how do you now kind of reproduce this process of an expert trying out stuff. Um, maybe by having, I don't know, um, kind of a logbook um, where every detail was noted down, but usually this doesn't work very well. Yeah? Um, there are also really, really simple optimization approaches. I guess I would put air quotes around these optimization approaches. Yeah, There's stuff like grid search, there's stuff like random search. They are very well known and still sometimes popular techniques um, in the domain of hyperparameter optimization, but in general you can could use them for arbitrary uh, expensive black box optimization problems, but they are not really true optimization algorithms. They just try try out stuff pretty much uniformly. Um, so I also don't want to go into the details here too much. I'm pretty sure you will have also heard of these approaches before. So there's grid search. Yeah, so you just put a, you discretize, discretize every parameter, like maybe 10 different discrete values for x1, 10 different discrete values for x2, and then you just try out everything on that regular grid, and at the end you return the best value. And there's also random search, or we call it a random design. Um, sometimes these search points are also called design points. Uh, that's another piece of confusing terminology going on because sometimes in this expensive black box optimization scenario is also sometimes called sequential design of experiments. Yeah, so because the stuff is so expensive, you kind of see every simulation uh, or every real world experiment, well, as an experiment, and then the task is to kind of sequentially plan them so you optimize the outcome. Now, well, and a random design, if you compare that to, to grid search or random search, just places points um, randomly into your region of interest. So the advantages of these, well, places them random, uniformly random, okay? Um, and the advantages of the these techniques are clear, uh, so they are very easy to explain. You can 
easily parallelize them. Um, you can implement them in a few seconds. Um, the disadvantages are also pretty clear. So they can be very, very inefficient if you kind of have to learn where the interesting area is. Uh, and they will search for very large and relevant areas. There are certain reasons why random search is nowadays preferred. Um, so this you can usually see from a rack plot. So if you, for example, the usual kind of um, argument goes like this. So assume, for example, um, parameter x2 is completely irrelevant. Yeah, so it has no influence on anything. Um, uh, that would mean that um, all of these points here on that line, they all have the same quality. And all of these points have the same quality. Now, you only, the only thing that's interesting is the variation in x1 in terms of what you're trying out and where you can actually gather information on and what you can use to improve the outcome, right, during optimization. Now, if it's 10 times 10 points, um, effectively, we have now only tried out 10 different scenarios. Um, and you can see this also by projecting these points onto the x x1 axis, because that's the only interesting parameter in my made up scenario. Um, while for random search, if you project everything on x1, you still have 100 different values you've tried out. But I'm already kind of beginning a more in-depth discussion of random search um, and these other techniques, which I don't want to do here. And then the third class of approaches, and this I would really not call naive approaches, but maybe ill-fitting Ill approaches to this expensive um, black box optimization scenario are these derivative-free techniques like NELDA, meet, simulate, annealing, evolutionary algorithms, we discussed that already. Um, advantages are also clear. I mean, it's a true optimization procedure. They all geared towards black box optimization. This is great. The disadvantage is usually these techniques will not work that well if you're operating under a tightly constrained budget. Um, sometimes the budget of your um, of your task is so small that the um, that the techniques have kind of simply begun or uh, yeah, succeeded in initializing themselves, but they couldn't really make any progress. So usually these techniques are constructed so they converge pretty precisely into the optimum. But yeah, they assume they can do maybe thousands or tens of thousands of variations for that. And um, to at least give you one, I don't know, semi-convincing example for this. So we took um, a, a mathematical, mathematical test function here, this Eckley function. We have looked at this before and we ran random search. We also ran the same AES, so an evolutionary strategy, which is pretty popular and pretty um, efficient normally uh, against Bayesian optimization. And you can see here, that if you're using a very, very tightly constrained budget of evaluations, so maybe something between 20 to 50 on this 2D problem, you can see that Bayesian optimization um, performs quite well, while um, CMA as this green guy here, it doesn't even really beat the random search, right? So it will do that from here on, I'm pretty sure, but you have to give it more budget. 